Before the video starts, I want to say that every weapon is viable, so play whatever you want to play. And I also have a Twitch partner flair, by the way. If you want that, you know, subscribe on Twitch with Prime, get to sub, whatever you want to do. Just, you know, just saying, throw it out there. What's up guys, Doke here, and today's video is going to be on a tier list for the weapons in Dauntless. I mean, I've been asked a lot of questions about, hey, you should make a tier list, showing like what you think is the best. And today I'm actually going to do that, finally. And the tier list is going to be overpowered, then strong, please no nerf, good, wait, I keep messing this up. Great, good, and then Monka S. Monka S is kind of, it means bad, but anyway, for the first weapon that's going to be overpowered, we're going to have the hammer. It's pretty self-explanatory. And the reasoning behind this is because the hammer does a absolute truckload of damage. It is astronomical. This thing just pumps out damage beyond what any other weapon is capable of doing at the moment. It's just nothing else can, nothing else can compete with just that aspect. On top of that, this, this hammer has a really strong buff called my Landbreaker that gives you extra damage. The base shell Aether, Aether Slam, or the, the base shell my Landbreaker gives you 20% extra damage, and the Aether Charge shells give you 35% extra damage for 30 seconds. That's crazy. And as an added bonus, it staggers really well, and stagger in this game is very strong at the moment because you stagger a behemoth and it gives you a ton of uptime on the behemoth, and the hammer does it really easily. And lastly, the hammer can boop very safely. Other weapons, it takes a lot of time and practice to boop really safely. The hammer, on the other, on the other hand, can do it with ease. And some weapons can't even boop safely. Like the like the axe can. On some behemoths, it's really hard to get a safe interrupt off unless you're using Grim Onslaught or Wage Strikes plus six on the other special. But anyway, that's the hammer. It's overpowered. The next category is strong. Please no nerf. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put repeaters in here. And also, I'm gonna put sword. So. Repeaters are in this category because they can pump out a ton of damage. Now the caveat is that repeaters cannot stagger whatsoever. If you have Wave Strikes plus 6, they can, but don't use Wave Strikes plus 6 on repeaters. It's kind of trash in like all regards. But anyway, repeaters can't really stagger. They don't have the best cell slots on the weapons, and they don't have a stat on the weapon either. Now to make up for it, they do have, you know, mods. Well, I don't have any mods. They have, they have mods, chambers, prisms, all kinds of stuff. That sort of makes up for it. But repeaters are really strong just because of their whole their whole kit makes them pretty good right now. If you play them properly, if you're playing close, all that kind of jazz. Which, by the way, if you want like a video on that, I got that in the top. This way, this camera's backwards. This way is like a video, a, a link to something. Anyway, it's hard to explain more so of why it's super strong without going into like crazy detail, but repairs are really good, and they have a lot of vers versatility. And plus they're modular, which makes it really simple to make a build and then just swap the barrel and the build can be used on any behemoth you want to fight. It's really nice. Now the sword is in this category because of its ease to ease to practice to get better with. It's not easy to be really good with the sword, but it's sort of easy to practice with in the beginning. But anyway, the sword is really strong because of its mods. Right now it has a mod called Reactive Hilt, which all crits basically got nerfed, like crit severity got nerfed, as well as the cunning perk got nerfed. So crit damage in this game sort of got a pretty heavy nerf recently. But that doesn't take away from the fact that the sword is really strong and it's also just really good at pretty much everything. It's the jack of all trades, master of none in this game. So it can do basically anything you want it to as long as you sort of learn how to execute it properly. It can boop pretty easily and it can boop rather safely once you learn how to do that. It can stagger pretty easily, it breaks parts super nicely because it has a, it's a slashing weapon. Slashing weapons get extra part damage versus tails and horns. And it's like, I believe, 50% extra part damage. So it makes you breaking those parts a lot easier. So the sword's in this category for that reason. Now, in great, I'm going to go ahead and put axe. So axe is in this category because it's a pretty good weapon. The caveats are that it's not very fast. Even with the ton of attack speed, the axe is not very fast on a couple fights. Fights like Embermane, to me, it's not that fast. Again, this is my opinion. So to me, axe is not that fast on Embermane. It's okay on Koshai now. It used to be really hard on Koshai, but it's okay on Koshai now. On Riftstalker, again, it's okay. But the reason it's getting better is because Grim Onslaught is its current special. It's it's one of the specials you can get, and that special is freaking nuts. Like it's my pretty much favorite special in the game right now. And Axe is one of my favorite weapons of the game. But this list is not about my favorites. It's about what I think is really good. 
So Grim Onslaught makes the axe really great. So Grim Onslaught is a boop. If you land it correctly, it can, if you pick it up now, before it lands, you get extra meter gain for your axe, making you get to determination stacks faster. Determination gives you more damage. And overall, the axe is really strong. Now, the reason it's also in great right now is because there is a bug, which it's not totally the reason, but it's part of the reason right now. There's a bug where if you're charging your axe with the light attack or the vertical swing, overhead swing, if you add zero stamina, it'll just cast. You can't charge it, none of that stuff. That's not exactly a big game breaker thing. It kind of, it's kind of rough. That's why I'm running, I'm running conditioning on the axe, but that's one of the sort of aspects of it. But another reason why the axe is in great is because interrupting with the axe is kind of hard because the axe is really slow. If you have Grimond slot, not a big deal because you just, you know, you just throw it and you're pretty much good in most cases. But if you don't have a Grimond slot up, interrupting can be kind of hard because the timing is rough. Now, if you can pretty much interrupt everything and not really trade, exceptions I've had in the past are Embermain. On Embermain, even if I connected before Embermain hit me, I still got hit. Like, I would interrupt it pretty well ahead of it getting close to my body, and I would still take damage. So that kind of made me feel like the axe was just sort of unsafe at interrupting. But with Grim Onslaught, it kind of takes away that, that factor, but Grim Onslaught has a pretty decently-ish long cooldown when it, when it comes to like interrupting, you know, really boop-heavy fights. But anyway, moving on. Next category is going to be good. In this category, we're going to have Chain Blades. Warp Pikes is going to go in the next category. But anyway, so Chain Blades are good because, for one, they are really fast. And now they have, I would say, they sort of have like two iframes now. Because you can dash and then really quickly use your special. And on Chain Blade, both specials give you an iframe. The first special is the backflip slash chain pull. I'm not really a fan of this special at all, honestly. And the next special, or the, the second special, is going to be Cruel Rift Strike. And Cruel Rift Strike is super nice. So Cruel Rift Strike is basically like a phantom just dash teleport to a behemoth. You teleport in and you turn around and you do a critical, uh, critical hit. And this makes it so Chain Blades can sort of uh, handle the fact that their dash has a delayed iframe, which is also why it's in good. So Chain Blades have a delayed iframe, making it kind of hard to dodge with. If you only play Chain Blades, and you try and play another weapon, you're going to get hit most of the time if you're not practicing both. Because Chain Blades have a different iframe than other weapons in terms of their dodge slash dash. So Chain Blade dash is different than a normal dodge in any other weapon. But what, what makes up for that is the fact that Chain Blades have their special, like I said. And also, Chain Blades are just really fun. They're really fast-paced. And they're just, they let you stick to Behemoths really, I, I, I'd say, uh, effectively. You're just always on a Behemoth, always hitting it really effectively. And it makes the fight really fun. But at the same time, a really, uh, I would say, what's, what, I don't know words, bro. I need to look up, I need to look up this, a thesaurus, bro. Anyway, a thing that makes the Chain Blades also in a good category is the fact that they can't really interrupt without having a cell called plus six wave strikes. This is sort of a bad thing. It's not too bad now, considering that a cell called Cunning got nerfed. But even still, actually, you want Cunning on the Chain Blades anyway. But, so right now on Chain Blades, if you want to interrupt, you have to have plus six wave strikes. And plus six wave strikes is somewhat useful on chain blades only because they hit really quickly. And wave strikes gives you part, it gives you flat damage, flat stagger damage, and it makes your uh, heavy or your range attacks have a chance, to, or they make your range attacks interrupt if you have plus six wave strikes. So your heavy attack on chain blades can interrupt. Now I would I would much rather have a cell like a fury and still be able to interrupt, but chain blades you can't do that. It's the only weapon in the game that has to have a cell. To interrupt, you could use grenades, but every weapon can use those, so that's kind of different. And that is sort of why it's in good. And now the last weapon is going to be, or the last category will be Monka S, which is a little emote that means it's bad or it's it's sketchy. And uh, it's going to be Warpike. So Warpike's in this category for a couple reasons. One of the big ones is that Warpike is very stamina draining, and at the same time, it doesn't really feel rewarding to play in a style that's really like it's it's, it's a dangerous play style. Warpike has a very dangerous playstyle, and it doesn't feel very rewarding at this moment. And on top of all that, Warpike has a special that sort of, it kind of made up for the fact that it was sort of lackluster in damage, because it had a support style special that gave your teammates, wait, I had follow notifications going up the whole time, I'm boosted, whatever. Warpike special gave you crit, it gives you a crit uh, chance. Savage Roll Spring gave you 25% uh, crit chance for a duration based on the missile uh, charge whenever you use it. Now, crit chance as a whole and crits got nerfed. 
So this sort of decreased the effectiveness of Warpike as well as a bunch of other weapons. But Warpike itself is really fun to play. It's just not very effective. You can get fast kill times. The one thing, I, it's, kind of, it's kind of like saying this, but every single weapon is viable, by the way. Don't look at this list and go, oh, these weapons are bad. Every weapon's viable. It's just that some weapons are better than others for certain reasons. But every weapon can get pretty quick kill times. Like, Frugal's gotten really quick, uh, really quick kill times with the Warpike. I've gotten quick, quick kill times with the Warpike. I'm talking too fast. But you can get quick kill times with every single weapon. Some weapons will do better than others in a lot of fights. For instance, the hammer is going to smoke every single other weapon in pretty much every single fight right now. Just because Aether Slam is busted, it has, you know, a ton of stuff going for it. But anyway, Warpike is really fun to play, by the way. It's just that it's not as viable as other weapons when it comes to getting the fastest kill time possible. So if you're looking for crazy kill times and, like, that's all you're worried about, the hammer might be your pick. Because Warpike also has a very... Funny, th funny thing happening with wounds. So Warpike creates wounds at, with its uh, with his light attacks. Now wounds only give you part damage, which is it's okay, I guess, but it's not like oh man, I'm getting more part damage, Pog Champ. No one says that. Because it's better to have actual damage, but Warpike does not give you actual damage for making wounds unless you have a cell called Plastic Savagery. Which if you want Plastic Savagery, you're also gonna want to have Acidic. Because Acidic makes you do less part damage and it makes you wound faster. Making it so the wounds you do create are created faster and they last longer. Making it better. But the problem with that is that Acidic has awful perk economy. Because you only ever want plus 3 Acidic. Anything more than that, not a good time. Because of how it works. Because while like, plus 6 Acidic isn't a good thing because it gives you extra part damage which you don't want. The whole point of having Acidic is to make it so you don't break parts. You, so you break parts less quickly and you make wounds faster. That's the whole point. But that is kind of why the Warpike isn't that great. It's because wounds aren't really a, in a good spot right now. And the damage of Warpike is not in a good spot right now, in all honesty. Fun as heck to play. Like, Warpike's fun to play. Every weapon on this list is fun to play. And I do suggest playing every single weapon. That's what I do. And I, I still play Warpike to this day. And I, I kind of like it. In the beginning, the weapons I hated the most, like at the very beginning, were Chain Blades. Once I found out they couldn't interrupt... And then Warpike. I've hated those pretty much for a long time until I think three months ago. I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and try to play Chain Blades. I'm going to go ahead and try and play Warpike. Which Akeda taught me Chain Blades by watching his streams and all that kind of jazz. Zhao taught me Warpike by watching him play. Revy taught me Sword by watching him stream. And for Axe, I learned from Fail and I learned from, I think, Pred Hell a little bit. And Hammer, I learned from Frugal. Repeaters, that's, that's my jam, all right? No one taught me that. That's my jam. But the main thing here now is that uh, people play these weapons. They stream, they stream this game. They make YouTube content for this game. If you want to learn these weapons and see what they can actually do, look for people that play them. I play every weapon. I don't play them to like the best of their capabilities for every single weapon. But other people do. Zhao is a Warpike main. Akea is a Chainblade main. Revy is a Sword main. Frugal is a Hammer main. But he's playing other stuff right now. And uh, Fail is an Axe main. Those are five people you could watch right now for you know more stuff if you want to like get more different opinions on things because i think it's, it's really important to have different takes on stuff from different people that you know it helps you see okay do, do, do multiple folks have the same opinion on the same thing and why or do they like you know different opinions and why it helps you basically learn so that's the end of this video i'm gonna stop i'm gonna stop ranting if you guys like this video though let me know i could do a video for cells and a video for behemoths if you want to and I could possibly do a video for, like, enjoyment of the weapons, but I'm pretty sure it's pretty clear that I like every single weapon, and, you know, for different reasons. But that's the end of the video, guys. If you liked it, leave a like on the on the video. It helps out the channel immensely. If you want to, leave a comment. Maybe consider sharing the video. And I do stream on Twitch pretty regularly. On Wednesdays, I'm going to start streaming from noon to 4 p.m. Central Time, and then Thursday through Saturday from 7 p.m. Central to 11 p.m. Central. And lastly, if you want to use my credit code in the Epic Games Store, it's Odo. It supports me with every purchase you make, and I greatly appreciate that because it, it supports me doing all this kind of stuff, making these videos, which, by the way, I'm, I'm tired. I need to get some sleep. Even though it's like 2 p.m., I'm like dying inside. But again, y'all, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.